The focus of this lecture is to explore uh, the issue of faith. So in the, less, uh, the last lecture, we looked at um, different educational theories and, and kind of thinking about different perspectives on um, human development and how uh, education would fit into that. And asking the question, is education primarily uh, about nature? Is it about kind of getting things out of the way for young people so that they can grow and develop and, and uh, inquire about the world? Uh, or is it about nurture? Is it, a, is it about um, having to discipline young people and help them cultivate ideas? So now we want to move in the direction of faith development and how in the world then do we think about growing faith or deepening faith? Uh, what is Christian education in the church, whether it's youth group or Sunday school, uh, how do we uh, tend to the faith of young people? And so James Fowler um, has written a book called The Stages of Faith, where he wrestles with this question of, of growing faith. And, and what does faith have to do with um, developmental theory and how young people develop, how humans develop? Uh, and so he begins by defining faith as a response to transcendence. Uh, he puts it in the terms of we set our heart upon something or we trust in something, and this becomes the source of meaning uh, and identity. And for, for us, as we think about this, we're talking about God um, and, and the, this transcendent God uh, who has relationship with us. Uh, but he, he puts them in, in kind of broad terms to kind of get us to think about faith in, in the terms of, of this responding to transcendence in whatever way we experience it. And uh, the questions of faith then really involve value, uh, values and kind of how our, our life begins shaped by the things that we love and the things that we then find meaningful. And so for Fowler, the emphasis is on faith and relationship, this kind of cultivation of, of relationality and trust um, and, and seeing ourself in relationship with God, but also a community uh, where we share values and we share kind of a common sense of, of power and, and how we see life developing and how we see life being ordered. And so really faith then involves many of the commitments that we hold that shape our identity and shape the way that we live in the world. He also talks about the importance of imagination, and we've talked about this before uh, earlier in this course, and thinking about uh, faith as kind of a composing of order where we make sense of the world, we make meaning, discerning the things that we're committed to, and much of this is, is really empowered by symbols. So as we go to church, as we participate in the Eucharist, as, as we do baptism, as we sing, as we hear scripture preached, these are all symbols that shape our imagination and help us to kind of make sense of all of these kind of disconnected uh, views of reality. And so uh, Fowler wants to talk about the metaphors and symbols that we use to really make these connections. So things like the kingdom of God or the Eucharist or the sacraments or praise and worship music. Um, all of these things are ways in which we use imagination to make sense of the world. Um, and so he talks about faith development then. How does faith develop? And he, he wants to say that faith actually develops through ruptures and interruptions. So, so again, we're, he draws from Piaget and, and others, as we'll see here in a little bit, and kind of thinking about what is it that catapults us forward in faith, that oftentimes there's events or there's things that happen or realizations that we come to. Uh, and he wants to say that faith actually develops in a similar way as our own self, as the ego, as our identity develops. And so he connects faith development with developmental theory uh, Piaget, Erickson, and Kohlberg, and we'll look at Erickson and Kohlberg uh, here uh, a little bit. So how do we make sense of this in the context of thinking of Eric Erickson's psychosocial stages? So this is a, a picture of the, the psychosocial stages of development that um, Eric Erickson um, developed. And what he wants to say is that um, these, these develop at certain times as we are kind of seeking relationality, as we're seeking trust, as we're seeking to kind of find our, our, our place. And so in infancy, this comes with trust versus mistrust. 
Um, do our parents feed us? Do they care for us, right? We're kind of at their mercy. And ch children who are cared for and have their needs met, they, they develop a healthy sense of trust. Whereas is kids who don't, uh, babies they, who don't, they, they have a sense, develop a sense of, of mistrust, which is going to then kind of skew their social development uh, later on. Early childhood, this moves to moves to autonomy versus shame and doubt. You can see there's a toilet there. So potty training, uh, how does potty training uh, figure into a child being uh, becoming autonomous uh, or holding in uh, a sense of, of shame and, and doubt about about the self? So again, potty training becomes this this um, moment where uh, this sense of self begins to develop and confidence in the self. And then in the preschool, you get initiative versus guilt. Do you have a child who um, is feels confident to go out and explore the world and, and take initiative? Uh, or do you have a child who's fearful uh, or anxious and, and not able to do those things? Um, School age, in industry versus inferiority. How well do they perform in school? Are they able to do the things that, that the community is calling them to do or do, do they struggle? Uh, adolescence, kind of identity formation versus role confusion. Do they find their place within a community or do they feel like an outsider or an outcast? Young adulthood is a time when they're seeking to develop intimacy and are they able to make connections with friendships or um, romantic partners? Or are they isolated? Are they, again, seen as outcasts? Then in middle adulthood, there's a sense of feeling as though you're contributing to society. This is often connected with employment or stagnation, where you do not feel like you're contributing. You're, you've lost your job or you don't find meaning in your work, uh, these types of things. Um, and then maturity, ego integrity. Can you look back on your life and see a, a healthy self? and and um, kind of rest in what's been accomplished, the relationships you've had, or do you look back on your life in despair and realize that, that your, your relationships are non-existent or they're broken, or the, you look back on the life that you've had and, and um, are in despair about opportunities missed and, and so on. And so all of these are ways in which our ego develops kind of through these social relationships, through affirmation, through um, uh, guilt and anxiety. And, and again, a child can either go in a positive direction or a negative direction that then have implications for how one, uh, how one develops. And, and so Fowler actually sees in Erickson uh, a model here for thinking about how faith develops. So these kind of psychosocial stages become a way of also then thinking about um, faith development. Uh, Kohlberg's moral stages development are also a figure into how Fowler begins to see uh, faith. So where does morality come from or how does morality develop? And so Kohlberg has these kind of three levels and then with stages in them. Level one is pre-morality. The first stage is, is just all about punishment and, and obedience. You do what's right because you're afraid of being punished. Um, the second stage is hedonistic, where you do what's right for personal gain or, or a reward. And so these are just very basic levels of, of morality. Second level, the conventional morality, um, you have stage three, the interpersonal concordance orientation. You do what's right according to the majority. So you want to be a good boy or girl. You want to fit in. Um, stage four is the law and order orientation. You do what's right because it's a duty and it helps society. And then the third stage, post-conventional morality, um, stage five is social contract or legalistic orientation. You do what's right even if it's against the law because the law is too restrictive. So you're able to begin to think outside of those boxes and say, you know, sometimes the law doesn't account for everything. Um, and then stage six is the universal ethical principle orientation. You do what's right because of an inner conscience, which is has absorbed justice, equality, and the sacredness of life. And the argument is not everybody makes it to stage six. We all make it to different levels. Um, you have older people who are still stuck in the punishment, you know, obedience orientation or the law and order orientation. 
But the idea is, is that we can develop into stage six where we are doing what is right because it has become a part of who we are, because it is, is the right thing uh, to do. So this is Kohlberg's moral stages of development. And again, Fowler sees both in Erickson and Moeller um, uh, an important connection with how faith, uh, faith might develop. This leads us to be thinking about um, the, the question of faith and how faith uh, develops um, by looking at uh, Fowler's stages of faith. And so I have the stages of faith listed here, and I'll just kind of walk through them. And so again, he wants to connect faith development with um, human development, social development, moral development. Um, and so I'll just walk through these stages. So stage one at age three to seven. Well, first of all, before this, you have what is called undifferentiated faith. You know, you're a baby and you just really don't necessarily have the symbols and language yet to make sense of the world. And so um, at this first stage, what, what you end up with is an egocentric kind of focus. You're aware of time and you begin to form images uh, that will affect your life later on, and those images are going to come from your parents. They're going to come right from your family. Stage two, around ages six through twelve, he refers to as the mythical or literal. So faith then it becomes grounded in the stories and beliefs of the local community. You use the narratives of the community, your church, family, to make sense of your experiences, and 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 to then put your trust in um, this this sense of transcendence that comes through these narratives and these symbols. Stage three then is when faith moves beyond the family and it becomes a way of forming and shaping an identity and to shape the values that you have. And so it moves out of family and local community into kind of a broader sense in which you're just kind of now making sense of the world. And and and, and your faith then is kind of grounded in this general sense of God and transcendence and, and morality and so on. Um, stage four is, is seen as early adulthood. Uh, and the focus here is that your sense of identity and your outlook on the world are differentiated and the person develops explicit systems of meaning. So at this time, you've developed this is how you see the world. This is how you understand God and morality and and this is how you, your faith gets expressed. And you have this system that has now been put together from all of these, you know, different communities, your parents, the church, the broader, uh, the broader community. Um, and so this is you have your belief system and this is what gives meaning to your life. And this is how you, you take action. Um, stage five, then, as an adult, um, it, what, what you end up with are experiences that create kind of paradoxes. Uh, you, you begin to see that some of these things don't fit so nice and neatly into your belief system that you've constructed or that's, that's been constructed from these other, other experiences. Uh, and so you begin to develop universal ideas and you actually become more focused on, on other people, on um, uh, engaging other people. You're okay with paradox. Um, and your belief system becomes less kind of absolute and, and maybe a little bit more uh, particular in the way in which you engage uh, uh, actual concrete people. And then stage six is universalizing, where people become totally altruistic. They feel an integral part of the all-inclusive sense of being. And it says this stage is rarely achieved. I mean, this is a stage of faith where, again, like the moral stage, it becomes this internal sense of connection with people, with God, and then with, with people um, and, and the creation. And so what Fowler is trying to, to say here, and he goes through these chapters where he kind of unpacks all of this and he gives examples, is he wants to show how faith and our belief in transcendence in God and the belief systems that we construct actually develop in, the similar, in a similar way as Erickson would say, our social trust and connection to community develops or our ego develops. Think of Piaget and, and, uh, and so on. Our, our identity develops. That faith itself develops in a similar kind of progression that follows, um, that follows human development. 
And so why this matters is, um, as we, when we, we'll talk about this a little later, but what does it mean to be the Christian community then? And, and how do we help people develop at these different stages of faith? Maybe knowing that they're in these different stages can help us uh, as we uh, help people deepen or grow in their understanding of who God is and, and how they form and shape the beliefs uh, that they hold. Now, what's interesting, though, is it raises a question about, um, uh, about faith. And, and in no way, shape, or form is Fowler trying to say that faith is, is biologically determined. But it raises the question about the role of the Spirit. Is faith primarily biological development, human development? Um, is it grounded there? Or does the Holy Spirit come in and kind of mess with us and, and grab hold of us? So there's a guy named James Loder. He wrote a book called The Logic of the Spirit, Human Development and Theological Perspective. And what he wants to say is that human development does open us up to the world. There's this kind of movement in human development where we move from being egocentric to being altruistic, where we're opened up to others and putting others before ourselves, or hopefully that, that's how we develop. Now, some people get stuck um, and remain very egocentric, but human development and in thinking of Erickson and Mold, uh, uh, Kohlberg and, and Piaget and, and others uh, opens us up to the world and to relationships and, and even to God. So Fowler is saying that it opens us up to the possibility of transcendence, to an understanding of God and, and a relationship with God. And so what really biologically develops is the possibility of trust and love and hope. And this is where the social sciences can help us, psychology and, and others can help us try to understand human development. Neuroscience here can be really important as we think about this outward movement. Daniel Siegel's Mindsight wants us to think about how the cultivation of a mind is connecting outside of ourselves. And of course, Fowler is saying this is how faith develops. What Loder wants us to, to recognize, though, is that the Holy Spirit breaks into this human development and it doesn't necessarily follow the path of human development. So while we're developing as human beings and kind of creating the categories and the capacities for articulating faith, the Spirit is constantly also at work kind of grabbing hold of us and transforming us. And so you can kind of see it working on, on these two axes, right? So one is this human development, growth, and then an in-breaking where the spirit is coming in and it's reordering and it's giving us new meaning. And so what Loder doesn't, wants to make sure we don't do is reduce faith to human development. Now, what I think Loder would, would want to say is that what human development does uh, is it provides the building blocks that the Holy Spirit then uses to, to break in and open us up to God and to have, have this, this experience. And what Loder really is also trying to say is that ego is not destiny, that biology and our social and cultural development, it's not the final word in our identity, that the spirit breaks in and it transforms us. Now, he would say that we're wired for spirituality and that there's a relationship there between the human and the divine spirit. So in, in his book, he talks about the relationship we have a human spirit and then the divine spirit and that there's a the holy spirit grabs hold and connects us um and, and so that there's a relationship between these things um, but he also wants to to recognize the negative side of human development um that as we grow and as we develop and freud would would talk about the death drive we know or have a sense that we're going to die and we see in our life relationships that come and go and things change. And so there is the dark side of life that is death and negation and this void um, that we often try to deny. And we do so in, in ways um, by throwing all of our attention and, and, and time into sports or technology or trying to stay young or uh, whatever, all as an attempt to avoid death. Um, and so Loder wants us to recognize that there's a part of our, our human development that, that uh, uh, an important part of our human development here that needs to be thought through and, and transformed. And that, that recognizing that um, ego and human development uh, does not, uh, it's not deterministic. That's what I'm trying to say. 
and that there's we got to leave room for the Holy Spirit to come in and break in and grab hold of us and transform us. And so Loder sees faith as the union between the human and the divine. So the human, human development, uh, but, but the divine spirit that breaks in. And this is revealed in Jesus Christ. I have the Chalcedonian definition here, fully human, fully divine. And really what we're getting here is the transformation of our ego. So if you think of your identity, you, the ego as this identity construction, um, the Holy Spirit, faith is the Holy Spirit grabbing hold of that and transforming it and breaking it open. Uh, so that we encounter God and we encounter the world. And he talks about the integrity of heart, which is really our transformation, where we are able to integrate into our identity a sense of the death and void. We're no longer suppressing it. We recognize what it means to be a human person, and the Spirit comes in and grabs hold of us and gives us the possibility of hope, of new life and transformation. Uh, he also wants to say that it, it works to overcome the protective patterns of the ego. So our tendency as the ego is to build up this world where we protect ourselves, And what the spirit does is it opens us up. Uh, think of the fruit of the spirit where we're opened up to love others. We're opened up to the goodness and grace uh, uh, of the world. So I, I share with you what Loder, Loder's focus, because what Loder is doing is taking Fowler's stages of faith and the whole human development thing and affirming it, I think, on the one hand, but also saying we need to recognize the importance of the, of the Holy Spirit and the role of the Spirit breaking in and transforming us. So how do we help young people cultivate a healthy ego, a healthy sense of identity, but also then create space where the Holy Spirit can come in and do its work? One of the questions that Loder uh, talks about is why is a lifetime and uh, what is a lifetime and why do we live it? And so he, what he wants us to think about is that when we talk about Christ in me and I am in Christ, we're united to Christ. We also become opened up and united to our fellow human beings and the creation. It's a very covenantal focus, uh, relational focus of, of our human identity. But he also wants us to see that our lifetime is reconfigured, that we live life in a linear fashion and we see life in a linear fashion. And human development is in that linear fashion. But that what happens uh, when we have faith is the Holy Spirit breaks in and transforms this linear time and, and moves us into a different form of time, the eternal time of God, in, in which we are transformed. And so that our normal development is transformed. So think about the psychosocial development of, of Erickson. You know, at those different stages, things can go wrong. And, and really what Loder is saying here is that even if things go wrong at a, a certain stage in that linear development, that is, does not determine your life. The Holy Spirit can always break in and bring transformation that transforms our past, our present, and our future. So seeing that the importance of maintaining that openness to the work of the Spirit as we also tend to faith development within kind of a, a developmental theory perspective. And so what this does is I think it opens up the possibility for us to, to think about the importance of Christian education for youth ministry, for Christian formation that what we need to do as leaders in the church is tend to identity and meaning. How do we help people cultivate their identity? Uh, how do we help them make meaning? How do we support their ego development? So again, some of you have been reading uh, Falling Upward by, by Richard Rohr. Here we would see ego development is the first half of life. And the, it is an important part. We, we need the integrity of the human person. You need to develop um, uh, a healthy ego. And we do that through rituals and stories and symbols. And this is what Christian education can provide. But what it's also providing is the space for transformation, for that second half of life, where the Holy Spirit wants to break in and transform our identity, break us open so that we can love God and love our neighbors, transform our past so that even if we've had these moments in our development that have kind of gone um, sideways, the Holy Spirit can come in and transform us and open us up to a new identity in Jesus Christ. So I share this with you because I think Fowler's stages of faith are very helpful. 
Um, and I, I also think Loader is helpful because it helps us see that human development in, in these developmental theories is not determinism. And I think Fowler would agree with that. Um, but Loader, I think, just helps us recognize that part of our job and task as teachers, as youth leaders, as pastors, is to tend to the identity of young people, but also to recognize that the Spirit is going to use our work for transformation. And so are we constantly, how do we see our work as a building block for the Holy Spirit to break into the lives of, of young people? And how are we always leaving space for the Holy Spirit uh, to do the Spirit's work? So all of this was an attempt to help us kind of think through what is faith and, and what is faith development, which will help us, I think, as we begin trying to think through uh, a pedagogy for teaching, for doing youth ministry, and always kind of thinking about how does our pedagogy helping shape identity and how is it also leaving space for the work of the Spirit.